immensely valuable and someday we'll have the set of tools we need to go, uh, as Mr. O'Keefe put it, anywhere, anytime. Okay. The first program works, the second essentially does not. Um, the, so, in short, we really need to take stock. This idea of having an unfocused program is simply unworkable if you want to have a program. We need to take stock, decide what our goals really are, and allocate our priorities in accord with those goals. Okay. Um, should we continue flying the shuttle? Uh, well, if our goal is to continue ferrying people up and down to uh, Earth orbit, as this is what we think our primary activity in space should be, then that is worth considering. But if our goal is, in fact, to send humans to the moon or Mars or wherever beyond low Earth orbit, then we, at, we have to allocate our priorities and allocate our funds to support those objectives if we wish to accomplish them. And we have to set a definitive schedule to achieve those objectives. Okay. The, the, um, the Apollo mode got us to the moon. It could get us to Mars if we choose. The shuttle mode will never get us anywhere. What's needed, though, to set a goal, set a schedule, and accomplish the project is leadership. In the beginning was the word. Now, what should the goal be? In my view, the goal needs to be humans to Mars within a decade. Okay. Why Mars? Okay. Because of all planetary destinations in reach, Mars is by far the most important. Uh, or the most, both scientifically, in terms of social benefits for our nation of if we do accept this challenge, and in terms of what it portends for the future. In terms of science, Mars is the Rosetta Stone letting us know the truth about the prevalence and potential diversity of life in the universe. Okay. We now know that Mars had liquid water on its surface, including standing bodies of water of various kinds, for a period on the order of a billion years, which is five times as long as it took life to appear on Earth after there was liquid water here. So if the theory is correct that life is a natural development from chemistry through chemical complexification, wherever you have an aqueous environment and reasonable temperatures and an assortment of various minerals and so forth present, then life should have appeared on Earth. Uh, on, on Mars, as it did on Earth. And if we can go to Mars and find fossils of past life on the surface, then we will have proven this conjecture and we will know that life is a general phenomenon. And since we now know that planets around stars are a general phenomenon, we have detected uh, over 200 extrasolar planetary systems. It now appears that planets around other stars are more the rule than the exception. Since every star has a, an appropriate distance, near or far, depending upon the brightness of the star, where you have acceptable temperatures for liquid water, if life develops with reasonable probability wherever it has planets uh, within this range, then life is everywhere. We're living in an inhabited universe. This is worth finding out. Okay? The, the, furthermore, if we can send astronauts to Mars and drill down into the subsurface where there is almost certainly liquid water underground on Mars, Okay, we know that because the, 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 we, we've now seen uh, a runoff, of, a, a transient runoff of water occurred during the lifetime of MGS from the side of a crater, which means there had to be a reservoir there. We're seeing methane vents coming out from Mars, which means at a minimum there has to be hydrothermal activity underground on Mars. Okay, if we can drill and reach that groundwater and bring it up and see if there is life in the water, because if there is life living on Mars today, that's where it is to be found, in liquid water. Okay. The, and, and we could examine that life. We could find out if it has the same um, chemical structure. All life on Earth has the same biochemistry, all these RNA and DNA and the amino acids of the same uh, group. And the, 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 does life on Mars replicate that pattern? In other words, is life on Earth the pattern for all life everywhere? Or are we just one particular example drawn from a much faster tapestry of possibilities? This is worth finding out. This is something that thinking men and women have wondered about for thousands of years. There is no comparable science to be done on the moon. Okay? The, the, you can go to the moon, you can date the craters, and you'll know that Aristarchus is this old, and this is when this meteor landed, and that is when that meteor landed, and somebody can get a paper published in the Journal of Geophysical Research out of that. But that is not something that changes humanity's worldview. This does. Okay? So Mars is vastly more important scientifically than the moon. 
or other alternative destinations that are actually within reach of the human spaceflight program. The, secondly, the, the challenge. I believe that civilizations are like individuals. We thrive when we're challenged, we stagnate when we are not. The Humans to Mars program would be a tremendous bracing challenge for our society and particularly for our youth. It would say to every young person in this country, learn your science and you can be part of pioneering new worlds. And out of that challenge, we would get millions of scientists, engineers, inventors, technological entrepreneurs, medical researchers, doctors, people who add to our military strength, our industrial strength, our social progress, advance our society in every capacity. And, 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 and this is really worth uh, uh, adding emphasis to. You know, the Apollo program doubled the number of science graduates in this country at every level, high school, college, PhD. And we're still benefiting from that today. Okay? Because, you know, these 40-something technological entrepreneurs who built Silicon Valley in the 1990s, these were the 12-year-old boy scientists of the 1960s who got into science because they were mad for space because of what was going on. And the, 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 now in this day and age, a Humans to Mars program would have an even greater social impact because the science and engineering professions are open to women today in a way that was simply not the case in the 1960s. So in, in addition to millions of little boy scientists, we get little, millions of little girl scientists. And these people would be making their contributions that add to our economic progress, our medical progress, our military strength for decades to come in a way that totally dwarfs the expenditure. But you have to challenge them. You're not going to challenge the youth of today with the idea of replicating the technological feats of their grandparents' generation. Okay? Youth loves adventure. We invite them to adventure, we raise their morale, we can address this problem. And then finally, there is the issue of the future. Okay? Mars has the resources to support life, therefore it also has the resources to potentially support civilization in a way that the moon simply does not. Mars has liquid water on it. We've now imaged places on Mars, continentized regions that are 60% water by weight in the soil that compares to the moon. Where People are talking about parts per million or maybe higher concentrations at 40 Kelvin in shadowed poles. The, 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 there's carbon on Mars. There's virtually no carbon on the moon. We're a carbon-based life form. All, everything we eat, everything we wear, whether it's natural or synthetic fibers, is made from carbon. Okay, this is made from carbon. Um, our fuels are made from carbon. Um, we need carbon. We have nitrogen on Mars. It's the minority constituent of the Martian atmosphere. Okay, nitrogen is absent on the moon. Another element fundamental for life. And the Mars has had a complex geologic history that has created mineral ore that can concentrate geochemically rare elements. You know, human beings have used copper since Egyptian times, but copper is actually a very rare element on Earth in terms of percent of the crust. Mm -hmm. It is, though, accessible because there are geological processes that concentrate it. The moon has not had these sorts of geological processes. Mars had, and that makes available uh, ore. It also has a 24-hour day, which is what is appropriate for growing plants in greenhouses. It has an atmosphere which is thick enough to basically mask out solar flare, so it can use thin-walled greenhouses on Mars instead of thick-walled greenhouses, which is what would be needed on the moon, assuming you had plants that could accept the two-week light-dark cycle. So you can do agriculture on the Mars in a way that's simply not.